Students, we are given this question. Find the equation of the ellipse whose eccentricity is 1 over 2 and one of the foci is 2 comma 3 directrix x is equal to 7. Find the length of the major and the minor axis. Now you should always remember that the eccentricity for the ellipse is less than 1. Okay. Have that in mind. And for a circle, the eccentricity is 0. So these are some informations that you have to know. So what they are talking about is the following. So let us consider an ellipse of this fashion. Now the rough sketch would be something like this. So we have the axis going on. Right. And we got the directrix x is equal to 7 is the directrix now we take a point here m right and we take a point here p and uh, imagine this is the focus s and s dash so let us connect p with s and p with m so this is a rough sketch okay now from conics, we know that SP, SP divided by PM is what is the eccentricity. So what I'm going to do from here, uh, this can be rewritten as SP is equal to E times PM and squaring both sides we get so what do we get you get sp squared is equal to e squared times pm squared now sp s is focus and p is a point on the ellipse now the focus is given to be as 2 comma 3 and the point p can be any x comma y so if we were to connect S and P, then the equation would be X minus 2 whole squared positive Y negative 3 whole squared is equal to E squared times. The directrix is given to be as X is equal to 7. And if we were to connect P and M, the equation would be X negative 7 raised to the power 2. But the value of E is given to be as 1 over 2. So if I were to take this as 1, I can rewrite 1 to be as x negative 2 raised to the power 2 positive y negative 3 raised to the power 2 is equal to 1 over 2 whole square times x negative 7 raised to the power 2. So this is the system that I'm getting. Expanding this we get the following. So what do we get when we expand? This is going to be x squared negative 4x positive 4 positive y squared negative 6y positive 9 is equal to 1 over 4 times x squared negative 14x positive 49. This is what we are getting. Now if I were to multiply by 4 both sides this is going to be 4 times of x squared negative 4x positive 4 positive y squared negative 6y positive 9 is equal to x squared negative 14x positive 49. So this is what I'm getting. So rewriting I get 4x squared negative 16x positive 16 positive 4y squared negative 24y positive 36. I bring every quantity that you see here to the left negative x squared positive 14x negative 49 is equal to 0. This is what I've got. So what I'm going to do is I need to do some simplification. So 4x squared with negative x squared would give me 3x squared. Now I've got negative 16x and that can be connected with positive 14x and that would give me negative 2x. I've got 16 36 and 49. So 16, 36, 12, 52 and negative 49 and that is going to give me 3. Okay, so 
is going to be plus 3. So I have taken care of this, I have taken care of this, I have taken care of this. I have got y squared here. So I have got positive y squared. Negative 24 y is equal to 0. So this is what I have got. Now what I am going to do is I am going to rewrite these things over here so that I can simplify it. So I got 3x squared negative 2x. I'm going to write it like that. Maybe I can also add a positive 3 to this quantity. Okay, let us see it later. So followed by positive 4y squared negative 24y and I've got a positive 3. Okay, so this is equal to 0. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite these two quantities in perfect square fashion. So let me see what happens when I do that. So I can take 3 out, so this will become x squared negative 2 over 3. Positive, if I were to take 4 out, this is going to be y squared negative 6. y positive 3 is equal to 0. Now, this is this got a x quantity, so I place that there. So if I were to rewrite this, I'm going to rewrite this as x negative 1 over 3. Now why do I do that? I'm going to show that to you. Now if I were to write x negative 1 over 3 all squared, this is going to give me x squared negative 2 times 1 over 3 times x positive 1 over 3 raised to the power 2. This is what I'm getting. So what I will do is I will write this quantity which you see here as x negative 1 over 3 raised to the power 2. There is an addition of 1 over 3 squared. So I will subtract that 1 over 3 raised to the power 2. Okay, so that is what I'm going to do. Of course, this has to be placed within a parenthesis. Okay followed by positive 4 of, I'm going to write y squared negative 6y as y negative 3 raised to the power 2. So when I do that, I will get y squared negative 6y positive 9. So it means I have to get rid of this 9. So that's going to be y negative 3 raised to the power 2 followed by a negative 9 followed by positive 3 is equal to 0. So if I were to expand this, right, so this is going to be 3 times x negative 1 over 3 whole squared, negative 3 times 1 over 9, positive 4 times y negative 3 whole squared, negative 36, positive 3 is equal to 0. I can rewrite this as 3 times x negative 1 over 3 whole squared, positive 4 times y negative 3 whole squared, and I can club all these quantities together. So this is going to be plus of negative 1 over 3 and negative 36 added with positive 3 will give me negative 33. Okay, is equal to 0. Now negative 1 over 3, negative 33. This is equal to negative 1, negative 99, which is negative 100 over 3. This is what I'm getting. So again, I have to rewrite them. So 3 times of x negative 1 over 3 whole squared positive 4 times of y negative 3 whole squared is followed by negative 100 over 3 is equal to 0. I can move this to the right and that would mean I have 3 times x negative 1 over 3 whole squared positive 4 times y negative 3 whole squared is equal to 100 over 3. So this is what I get. I'm getting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 100. I need to get rid of this 3. I need to get rid of this 4. So the only way I can do that is to first divide it by 12. Okay, now if I divide this by 12, okay, both sides, I would be getting x negative 1 over 3 whole square divided by 4 positive y negative 3 whole square divided by 12 it's going to be 3 there, right? So 
followed by 100 over this is going to be 36 so this is what this is what I'm getting now I need to have a one here now to have a one what I'm going to do is I need to divide both sides divide both sides by 100 over 36 so I need to do that so if I do that this is going to be x negative 1 over 3 whole square divided by 4 over 100 over 36 plus y negative 3 whole square divided by 3 over 100 over 36 is equal to 1. So this is what I'm getting. Now of course I can flip these terms. So if I flip them, I can rewrite them to be as follows. So it's going to be x negative 1 over 3 whole squared divided by 4 over times 36 divided by 100. Because I am flipping, I'm flipping this quantity. So if I flip it, this entire quantity will go to the numerator. Okay, and it would be returned like this. Okay, positive y negative 3 whole square divided by 3 times of 36 over 100 is equal to 1. Now 4 divides here uh, 9 times and 3 divides here uh, 12 times. So I have got x negative 1 over 3 whole square multiplied by 9 over 100 positive y negative 3 whole square times 12 over 100 is equal to 1. This is what I've got. Now I can rewrite them as rewriting x negative 1 over 3 whole squared divided by 100 over 9. I can rewrite it like this followed by y negative 3 whole squared divided by 100 over 12 is equal to 1. So I can do that. So this implies a squared is equal to 100 over 9 so a is equal to root of 100 over 9 which means 10 over 3 this is a also b squared is equal to 100 over 12 and the b is equal to 10 divided by root of 12 which is going to be 10 divided by root of 4 times 3 which is 10 divided by 2 times root 3 so this is what i get for b and a they want the length of the major and the minor axis. Length of major axis is given to be as 2a, which is nothing but 2 times 10 over 3, which is 20 over 3. And length of minor axis is equal to 2b, which is equal to 2 times of 10 over 2 into root 3, which is equal to 10 over root 3. So this completes the solution for this question.